We, we don't want to trick or treat, Lee wailed, holding on to Tabby. We want to go home, Tabby cried. More houses, more houses, more houses. The pumpkin heads continued their hissing chant. They bumped us together. They bumped and pushed us. We had no choice. Wearily, we picked up our trick-or-treat bags from where they had fallen on the grass. They moved behind us, chanting, chanting in their low, dry whispers. More houses, more houses. They pushed us to the first house on the block. They pushed us onto the front stoop. Then they hovered close behind. How, how long do we have to trick or treat? Tabby demanded. Their pumpkin heads grinned together. Forever, they declared. You can't scare me. Not with the basement black and me. Maybe a sentient dummy. Boo, dudes. Welcome back to episode, well, book number 48 uh, for Calling All Creeps. I'm your host, Kevin McAllister. I'm here with Fuller. Kevin! <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Fuller, can you can we strike a little bargain here? I mean, we are sharing the bed tonight, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, do not, under any circumstances, piss on me. <laughs> do you remember when we made a reference to Fuller? for like i think it was like four or five episodes in a row yeah 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 yeah. the fuller cast fuller cast return of fuller cast yeah the sponsored by pepsi Mm -hmm. and wasn't that like kevin uh his like actual cousin or brother or something oh i don't know what a what a wild family i feel like everything i watched there's a culkin in it yeah oh but i do love macaulay macaulay culkin culkin which is his legal name right now (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah, he's had a fun like decade or whatever. He was in that band that did like all pizza songs or something. Yeah, it was which I thought was funny like 15 years ago. Yeah, it was a Velvet Underground cover band, but they just made all the songs about pizza. Right. For about a day, I thought like, "Oh, that's funny and cute." And then I was like, "Fuck this." <laughs> and who was the celebrity? He was doing the thing where like they wore a shirt with a picture of him on it. So he, oh, was it Ryan? I think Gosling? it was Ryan Gosling. I, yeah, friend of the yeah. friend of the show, Ryan Gosling. Uh, <laughs> friend of the show. Yeah. So yeah, Ryan Gosling was wearing a shirt with Kevin McAllister on it, I believe. Right. Uh, so yeah. uh, Macaulay Macaulay Culkin Culkin um, printed a shirt. I uh, got a shirt printed of the picture of Ryan Gosling wearing the shirt, wearing him on the shirt, and then they just went back and forth forever until I believe yeah. Macaulay Culkin got like. The picture of him on the shirt of Ryan Gosling, picture on his shirt, picture on his shirt, like like through it, he yeah. got them printed as like bed sheets. <laughs> 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 and it was just this growing thing. It was very cool. I mean, it's hey, nice when you got nothing but time and money. Yeah. And I mean, they're both child actors. Uh, yeah. Ryan Gosling, famously from Goosebumps. His most uh, prestigious role. Before he was your La La Land, he was Correct. hanging out with his good friend, Duck. Yeah. And then replaced by the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, he was on to Bigger and Better Things, Mickey Mouse Club and all that. Mm-hmm. Well, Dave, here we are, post-Thanksgiving, approaching Christmas. You know what? Uh, a thing that I'm going to do as we get nearer to Christmas is I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to demand that everyone say Merry Christmas. I'm going to use it as like a weapon. What do you Mm. think of that? Hmm. I mean, I may have to join you only, only, I, I know this is a little controversial, but I think Starbucks cups Mm -hmm. should have pictures of our crucified Lord Jesus Christ (laughs) bleeding down the cup. They'd only did the red cup and then, uh. I'm. I don't really consider myself a Christian, but I do consider myself a Jesus enthusiast. With his just razor cut abs, and he's got some great wounds. The boy's got some good wounds. <laughs> I'm. I'm nothing if not God fearing, and uh, I. I agree. I'm still pissed about the red cups from seven years ago or whatever. Remember that was. when they said the war with Christmas? 
I think we're in a cold war with Christmas, too. I agree. We need more menorahs, too. I'm at war with the, the war on Hanukkah, too. And winter solstice. Yeah. The war on Christmas specials. You know what I'll do is, uh, during Hanukkah, I will aggressively say Happy Hanukkah and demand that people reciprocate. And then post Hanukkah, I'll do the same with Christmas. I have no trouble with Starbucks treating of Hanukkah because, I mean, as a company, they don't do anything trash. But uh, my local one, they always, every day I go on a day of Hanukkah, they light one of my cups on fire (laughs) until I have eight flaming cups. That's lovely. I, I love that. And the dark roast lasted for eight. No, they don't. They stopped brewing that shit at like twelve. <laughs> you know what? Uh, that's that's true. By the uh, way, I this is all. Starbucks. This is all a good joke. This is all in fun. Please don't <laughs> add us about. No, no, no. This is real. I still would love a Starbucks cup with a bloody Jesus on a cross. Oh, absolutely. But I, yeah. they would need I to would... do all like. Like, you know, there need to be so many like persecutions and holidays and blah blah blah. Like a Jew, I would all. Oh, I'd get down on a Judah Maccabee Tumblr. <laughs> I'd love that. Yeah, I like this. I think we're on to something here. We should pitch it to uh, to Starbucks. And uh, yeah, they should do like a whole series of cups like with biblical themes like Jesus on a cross. Yeah, well, it, this would be like, him being born. We would need a baby because he doesn't mm. get killed. That would need to be their like special Easter cups where he like comes back reusable yeah so you know the cup comes back so does christ he's like half terminator and i'll be back yeah. I, yeah. I will roll the rock i will be back <laughs> and i know some people take this very seriously religion is something to be taken seriously wars are fought over it and that's why we just want to say yeah that's why we're at war with christmas <laughs> yeah no, but with christmas no but i mean we don't take ourselves seriously and i mean i believe it was uh god himself that says um man is his own god I read that yeah. on a. I read that on the window of a yoga studio, so it has to be true. <laughs> and they had a lot of different triangles that were all on top of each other. It was in gold. It was very nice. It sounds lovely. It sounds lovely. Yeah, I bought a lot of scarves, candles. Ooh la la. There's some like just smells. You know, places they just smell like a little dropper. You feel like a science guy, but it's just like this is just like a smell. Yeah. Yeah. Why? I love those places. I love them. Yeah. Uh, Dave, how was your Thanksgiving? Uh, uneventful. Uneventful. Yeah. I just did a, Same. a Zoom. Yep. Yep. But you, I saw you. Did you cook a turkey? No, that was all my lovely wife, uh, producer of the pod. She made the entire feast. It looked incredible. Um, yeah, it was good. Yeah, we also stayed home. Produ- uh, producer Chib produced a turkey. She she did. Correct. And, uh, yeah, it was nice. We, uh, drank some wine. We had Lord of the Rings on the TV. Um, you know, that's about it. In the morning, something I do every holiday, and I don't mind saying so, is, you know, Dave, uh, as someone who has gifted me Garfield and Friends on DVD in the past, Mm -hmm. uh, I watch, I watch each Garfield holiday special on the designated holiday. Oh, that's so cute. Yesterday I watched uh, Garfield's Thanksgiving, and uh, that was very nice. Is it just him eating like eight turkeys and then dying because cats can't do that? <laughs> well, it's uh, he does enjoy. He gets to enjoy the the feast. It's the plot is like he has to go on a diet, and how inconvenient is that? Because it's Thanksgiving, Dave. That's so. Oh, John. John, it's actually Liz, the the vet, does it. Oh, okay. And where's John in all this? He's trying to help out his bud. He, he's trying. He's so horny. He's trying to get a date with Liz. It's preoccupying all his time. Oh, he's th- he's thinking with his. You know what? Is he babe. covering up the murder of Lyman? <laughs> he disappeared yeah. very early into the strip. He did. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah, as I've I've often said in my head, uh, Garfield is my favorite conservative. Garfield is the only good Republican. Mm, yeah. I'll also give Hank Hill that too. I would agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He couldn't vote for... Well, Hank, Hank Hill's like a... Uh, he's like a Lincoln Republican. Yeah. He couldn't vote for George W. Bush because he had a weak handshake. <laughs> Do you remember that episode? <laughs> That's right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what a masterpiece of a show. Yeah. 
Um, as we've said before. So, I mean, we've buried the lead and we've buried the, the, the intro, but this is a Goosebumps book. And it's, well, actually, there was one other thing I wanted to say. You realize that this will be the second to last episode, I believe, of No Not 2020. Oh, my God. I can't wait to release 2021. <laughs> yeah, it's just been building up. <laughs> yeah, Dave and I were saying this, a uh, little peek behind the curtain, this is being recorded shockingly close to release time. So this will see no editing. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're not going to say J or C, lowercase C, or uh, uh, nut, which we can say. We can say that because it's not a 2020. If for the Do people you know, who are new listening to this, it's uh, a challenge. To, we used the word for male excrement too much sexual yes. excrement on this podcast so we uh <laughs> excrement yeah well i can't say anything good or you'll we'll have no, to go I and bleep know. it yeah, but yeah. um yeah so we decided it was no not 2020 we bleeped out yeah. every reference and we're almost done yeah much I like what right. you know you're done when you uh yeah <laughs> when you in quotes finish yeah yeah I, you know what a uh, friend of the pod eric our dad mm-hmm. hi dad hi dad uh you know what he he pointed out that we we used uh, terms of to uh, lowercase e, e j a c u l. That's science. Uh, that's science. Though. That's just, that's science. Yeah, we used that term a lot last episode, and we didn't bleep it because it was like in the context of the act. Or no, it was it was the verb, oh. but not the noun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but then I was like, does context change it? Because we were, or like I didn't. I didn't bleep it when we were singing Black Hole Sun, Won't You Come, because those are the lyrics. Yeah, and it's, then, it's spelled with an E. It's C-O-M-E. <laughs> yeah, but then also we changed the lyrics so that the context changed, and now it was a verb, so shouldn't I have bleeped it? No. It's very confusing. No, I just wrote bad lyrics. <laughs> it just didn't yeah. make sense. <laughs> but All right, cool. Okay, so this is book number 48. We, are, we have less than 15 books left of this podcast, and then All right. we can die. <laughs> <laughs> finally just put me in my grave uh this book came out it's a big one october 1996 wow halloween did you did I've you heard of it. did you believe that this was the halloween book for this year could you have thought no i would have no context <laughs> clues it's about that yeah attack of the jack-o'-lanterns uh we'll, we'll go into the time and place as we always do but kind of unexciting what's here song still the macarena the movie was sleepers which was a legal crime drama and had everybody in it like kevin bacon was J- j-lo in that uh hold on kevin bacon jason patrick brad pitt robert de niro dustin hoffman mini driver victorio gossman brad renfro joe perino jim no I, I have like a whole list, but my brain told me JLo was in it. I'm not sure what that means. For so, me. what were you for Halloween this year? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, I was JLo. Nice, nice, nice. I think I was either a boxer, or uh, I think this may have been the year I was curly. The, with oh, really, yeah, I had the mask because I'm. I was. Tra- this- I thought it was last year, but like doing the math of when the mask came out and stuff. Right. And this was yeah. really full tilt goosebump time. I agree. I was just going to say that. Yeah. 96, like late 96 for yeah. sure. In this, uh, in the back of this book that I have, there's the new and shocking Goosebumps fan club pack. Um, and really good shit in here, but it, it's just, it shows like how much, uh, Goosebumps was sort of in the zeitgeist and consumerism for Goosebumps. Was that an all time high? What was shocking? It says all new and shocking Goosebumps fan club pack. There's a folder. Ooh, I'm shocked. Game sheets. I don't know what that means. Bunch Zipper of tag. Bunch of condoms. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, this is shocking. I'm a child. I'm shocked. <laughs> There's curly juice. Uh, and it's just a jar full of lowercase c. Um, <laughs> There's a wallet, notepad, curly bio. I don't know. There's like a there's like a pamphlet on curly. I'd I'd love to read that right now. Oh my god. Let me see if I can find it. Um yeah, and I mean there's a whole bunch of shit back. Like ads on ads on ads in the back of this book. Uh Give Yourself Goosebumps was out already at this time. So already they had a spin-off. There was there's a advertisement in here for another set of goosebumps books um which were the ones that were published based on the tv episodes 
Oh, so yeah. it was like you'd buy those and it would have it says there's like eight pages of full color photos from the show um and then also the vhs tapes yes that so dave is holding up uh, a picture of what the goosebumps fan club stuff used to come in when it shipped to you and it's a little coffin yeah i had that coffin that's actually from i think the last um the last fan club pack because this one you could maybe see here is it black no, it's it's like a it's it's just a straight up shipping box, but on it it has a picture of a tombstone. So it's not shaped like a coffin. It's just a box that has a tombstone on it and it says here lies Goosebumps, the official Goosebumps fan club. And it has um curly which okay, this is strange, Dave. I and I don't know. I mean, it's pretty dark in here, but this is picturing curly as the chef skeleton from the cover of say cheese and die yeah it says curly underneath that picture and i don't know if that's canon that's not really curly that's like uh what's his face's family from that book series maybe that's just what's so shocking <clears throat> i'm shocked frankly look at this kid who's shocked on the ad <laughs> One of the ads we'll has a screaming child. I'm just saving photo after photo right now. Hell yeah. You can get Rich iron ons content. and stuff. Like, woof. Baby. Yeah, man. Crazy stuff. Uh, all right. So what I wanted to get into is uh, instead of doing events that happened in October, who gives a crap? Let's just talk about Halloween, man. Yeah, baby. Can you guess the top three Halloween costumes of 1996? Oh, my God. Did you find this info? Yeah. The first wow. one is, like, if you don't guess it, I wouldn't have guessed it. But, like, you'll be slapping yourself. Because I remember that year. I think I was in, like, fourth grade, third grade. Every per I wasn't. But, like, every person had a version of this costume. Gotcha. Every person. Are That's the hint. Is it is it too much of a hint to tell me if these are like intellectual properties, like characters? This is an or intellectual like, property. Okay, it is now a franchise based off this character, kind of. Okay, and it's it's the most '90s costume ever. Shit, I'm gonna fail miserably. My brain only has like it is still technically morning, right? Am I? Can I use this excuse? Yeah. Um, yeah, I my brain just wants to say Power Rangers for everything or like Ninja Turtles. Um, Think scary. 90s. Scary. Scary 90s. David Arquette. Uh, oh. <laughs> 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 All right, so there's some scream happening yep. at number 1. Ghostface was number 1. Uh right. number 2 you would never get <laughs> because it's it was Esmeralda from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Oh my god. That is extremely 90s. I remember like the the Burger King tie-in for for that movie. Um, I just remember those then, like fat gargoyles, like the gargoyles that were friends. Yes. But yeah, yeah, yeah. In my head, one of them was Danny DeVito, but I know that was the goat from Hercules was Danny DeVito. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, number three, third top costume, which is kind of sad because this news came out today. But, oh, um, is it Pr Princess Diana was number three. <laughs> <laughs> just wrapped in a seatbelt. Yeah, it was just all the kids. It was a ra all the rage. It was sexy dead Princess Diana. <laughs> <laughs> She's making a comeback now. The Crown heard of it. Uh, actually, this morning, early, early this morning, they're saying it was announced six hours ago that David Prowse, the original actor of Darth Vader passed away oh that's right yeah. that's right and darth uh, vader was number three okay that's cool man star wars invaded every every decade so far this is when it really picked up when the yeah. powers of the force uh toys started coming out shadows of the empire yeah. everything like that was huge and then 1996 had a lot of horror movies um and very 90s ones so Here's just a list of some movies, horror movies that came out in 1996, kind of like bigger ones. Uh, the Craft, sure. which I don't know if it's getting a remake or got a remake, but I don't know. Uh, the Frighteners, From Dust Till Dawn, uh, somebody was on our pod, other Dave, uh, Dave our, our friend Dave, who was on uh, the one who taught us about how to say Vagina. That's <laughs> sure. his uh, favorite movie. I don't know if he used his last name, so I'm trying to... 
He was on a uh, Deep Trouble. He showed me that movie for the first time and yeah, said, yeah, yeah. he said he it, used his last name. Oh, it's, it's he's like this is just a crime movie starring George Clooney. And I'm like, all right. And he did not tell me what the movie was actually about <laughs> until, <laughs> and then it took that hard turn. And I was like, all right, this movie, this Hell movie yeah. rips. Um, Hellraiser, Bloodline, Scream, Tales from the Crypt, Bordello of Blood, Thinner. Uh, that movie freaked me the fuck out. I didn't even see the movie as a child. I just saw the commercial and I was scared. And uh, Tremors 2. Nice. Uh, so some information about this book. The French cover cover is just nightmare fuel it is horrifying it's like attack of the killer tomatoes style art and it actually gives away the ending um and the book came with metallic stickers the i got an old version uh and they were not in there i don't know if you still have your metallic stickers Mine does, doesn't have metallic stickers. It says Goosebumps trading cards inside. And Dave, you know I ripped that shit out. Oh, yeah. You were trading them. Yeah. You were like a, I, a day trader with those cards. <laughs> I was. But I so sloppily tore them out. I tore them out so passionately that I think I affected the cards. Because the rip <laughs> is bad. <laughs> well, you're just too excited to rip. Uh, I was, yeah. Um, When they first unveiled the classic goosebumps cover for this book they actually mistakenly put the apostrophe for jack o lantern before the o <laughs> oh my god uh, people are so confused by apostrophes yeah. and quotation marks but they were able to fix it before they released it um the whole book the ending is said to be inspired by the twilight zone episode as many are arl stein's huge fan of twilight zone uh, to Serve Man was the name of the episode. Um, a possible early title for this book, which Fox Kids kind of gave away, um, was Night of the Jack-O-Lanterns. Uh, reason we know this is because this is one of the few books where the book and the TV episode came out at the same time, October 96. Ooh la la. Yeah, so they kind of gave the, the story and everything, and they, they came out together. Um, this book... One thing I noticed about it is it is one of the most problematic books in a way. Yeah, I noticed that too. Striking. And I don't know if you want me to talk about everything that was changed in the classic Goosebumps reprint. (gasps) Yes, I do. I read the the original one, so I got all of this unadult. Same, yeah. I feel like an overweight person, like, cut... R.L. Stein at the, the line at the grocery store. <laughs> he was just like, yeah, "I'll we, get him this time." <laughs> we've we've said this, but it's it is fascinating that almost every book seems to fat shame, but this one is more than just fat shame. This is like an attack on on overweight people. It is his opus. Yeah, absolutely. And then we've given him so much credit on like because he describes everybody to a T. When it comes to yeah. like what they're wearing, but like a lot of times he would just say like they had dark features and dark hair, and we'd be like, yeah, you can kind of get the ethnicity and like the the culture of the person from mm-hmm. his details without hitting the nail on the head. He yeah. he gave all that up on this one. Yep. So yep. he dove head first. Uh, so the the classic Goosebumps reprint changes Lee, a character's description, to remove yeah. the reference that he's African American and is cool like an MTV rapper. <laughs> <laughs> i can't imagine why they would remove that. yeah the reprint just says that he has dark skin um okay. and then all of these references to overweight people were removed yeah. as well the line where drew's dad called shane and shauna roly-poly people is removed yeah uh the description of four missing people changed so they're described as big instead of all being fat uh, a man in a turtleneck was described as being six foot two instead of having six chins. And at the, yeah. And then at the end, they talk about large adults rather than plump adults. Yeah. Well, it's, it's hard to even get around in a reprint because it's part of the plot. It's, it's like, I mean, not to, to tip our hand, but it like these things, there's attacks on particularly overweight people in this yeah. book. So you, you kind of have to change things around. And it's so perverse because it's like, all right, here's a here's a, a murderer who is choosing a specific demographic. And then you have children in this book who are part of that demographic and they're scared to be murdered because of the way that they are. I mean, really, that's it. 
Yeah. And, Shane and oh. Shayna are scared because, you know, it, I wrote, made a note of it, page 45, it's in my bad. They're like uh, afraid of getting killed because they just, you know, are who they are. Okay. I'm going to say something. Can you do me a favor that you would not uh, make, do an impression? <laughs> you want me to promise to not do an impression? Yeah. Try your hardest. Mm. All right, I'll try my hardest, but I can't make any guarantees. Go. I just kept thinking about the Family Guy episode with the fat guy strangler. (laughs) Because that's basically (laughs) this book. The cover could be a man with a jack-o'-lantern mask poking an overweight guy (laughs) with a stick. And it would be completely accurate. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is absolutely that energy. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna spare us, Oof. Dave. Oof. D- don't worry about it. Don't Oof. worry about it. All right. <laughs> okay. Sorry. That was. <laughs> I don't know what that was. It's not gonna happen again. That, don't, don't worry about it. Was that producer Chip in the background? Was, yeah. <laughs> she probably thought something was funny. I think it was Lucy Blumpkins. <laughs> All right. Do you want to dive into this plot? Yeah. Why not? Who cares? Uh, th- <laughs> this book is. I mean, it's. Dave said early on when we were kind of speaking about this book a little bit, it is a phone in uh, ultimately. It's it's about 10 pages shorter than your average Goosebumps book. It's uh, the, the framing of the plot and the story I would put into three parts. And the first part is a flashback to two years ago. The second part is a flashback one year ago. And then present day, and we carry on the book from there. Yeah. And your flashback initially is each flashback is Halloween. And what you have are, first of all, too many characters. Um, but you have Drew Brockman is your central character. And Drew is 12, of course, and has a buddy, uh, buddy's name, Dave? Walker. I forget. Walker, correct. And uh, they then have other friends um shane and shana who are twins and they have frenemies strange relationship here they have sure that's the best i could come up with is that they're frenemies i don't know why they keep seeking each other out yeah uh but they are tabby a girl who is you know whatever full of herself and vain uh yeah and then yeah go yeah ahead. so tabitha weiss and everything yeah. about her is perfect And this is why I thought the book was very problematic as well, because it goes like Tabitha is always hanging out with Lee and stuff. And she has the perfect creamy white skin. And I was like, oh, that's weird. You sound like some sort of like KKK member. And then it's just like Lee is African-American and cool like a rapper on him. And I was like, all right, there's so much problematic. Yeah, I mean, what you're saying there is a hundred percent. That is literally the book. It's like it's like Tabitha is the picture of perfection, a uh, lovely Anglo-Saxon, beautiful <laughs> wasp. <laughs> Maybe those are uh, dueling descriptions, but uh, yeah, just like you know, she, she's she's ideal. Yeah. And then over here you have her buddy uh, Lee, who is dribbling a basketball. It's <laughs> yeah, like literally, it's, it's totally fucking insane. Um, but yeah, so those are the, but those are the sort of the antagonists. Those are the, the, those two characters serve as a function for the story to move, uh, because, uh, Drew's goal is to scare Tabby and Lee because Tabby and Lee have teamed up with like cool high school kids in the past to scare, um, Walker and Drew. Yeah. And you know so, one of those teenagers, his name is Todd, because that just fits. <laughs> yeah. That's so 90s. I was like, yeah, dude, that's how it goes. Yeah. Is Todd and Joe? Is that? I think the other one's Joe. Todd and not Todd. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but and, uh, they ruined. So the, the whole thing is like these two handsome, perfect kids ruined their Halloween two years in a row. And we got to hear about yeah. it. Right. And... and uh, it's a revenge story. It's really just Haunted yeah. Mask, except uh, yeah, he, I that. it's just like, let's just fill Haunted Mask with hate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and similarly to Carly Beth, 
the central character, Drew, I made a note here because she makes a point of loving Halloween because you get to be somebody else. Yes. So Drew is A, aggressive. Like she's she's on the attack from the beginning <clears throat> and she's not, I mean, Carly Beth's a little more um, down on herself and self-pitying. Um, but Drew is aggressive, but has the same uh, self-esteem issues. And she, um, because, and I think that's, that's in a way good and true to life because if you go to middle school, I was going to say in the nineties, but really at any time, it's a time of trying to find your identity and sort of surviving and you will have some, some self-esteem issues maybe. Um, so that, that was good. But then anyway, the, the whole thing is, yeah, two years ago they're at a party and they got scared by the high school kids who, you know, Lee and uh, Tavi put the high school kids up to it to scare everybody. Then a year ago, what was the thing a year ago? Um, how did Halloween get ruined? It was, oh, so, yeah, so they come in and they, like, make them do push-ups. They come in and pretend they're, like, robbing the place and make them do push-ups and their costumes break. That's number one. Number two was they were, like, doing the Halloween party and they were going to prank them. Right, and they just didn't come. They didn't come because they had an offer to go trick-or-treating in great neighborhoods with their cousins. And they were just like, oh, sorry, we can't come. Right. But, like. I don't know. The other thing too is that like it was it it's not a big deal. <laughs> like any of this. <laughs> Cuz like you have to think back to Carly Beth. They made the girl like eat worms and like th- yeah. like f- held her mouth open and like put a bat in it and like just beat <laughs> the shit out of her and like yeah. Made her like I don't know, made their dad like kiss her dad and ruin the marriage yeah, yeah. like it it was just insane the amount of shit they went to it was like really malicious stuff this was like a little prank and it was like oh prank we got you then the next year they say that they ruined it because they were going to like they ruined their second halloween because they were not allowed to ruin their halloween right yeah they and, wanted their they, they had a taste for revenge and they couldn't execute the plan yeah, so they ruined their own Halloween, but they're blaming Lee and Tabby. Right, because they created this elaborate, like, scheme, yeah. and then it was just a waste. It was like an aggro crag of slime and blood. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was like, like we got real spider webs, and I have a tarantula that I can put inside of it and throw at them. Like, it's yeah, 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 and, yep. And they bought, they somehow attained all this like uh, fucking flarp and uh, fake blood and stuff. And Shane and Shana are like, they they come up with these ideas, and you don't even get to hear what they are. But like Drew, she's just kind of like, whoa, what the fuck, dude? Like that's yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just like yeah. At first we can like put them in the spider webs, and then we can get knives and we can cut their Achilles tendons. <laughs> They're like, whoa, <laughs> you have some hate in you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's um, like, I'm the reasonable one. Like, meanwhile, they're trying to figure out. It's like, if we put, how much slime can we put on the ceiling so that we can time it to fall on them? Yeah, right. Um, so, and then that brings us to present day, which they want to meet up to go trick or treating. To then, they don't like. They don't tip their hand as far as the plan. Yeah. Yet. Um. But they, what we do know is that Shane and Shane are going to meet up with them at some point in trick or treating and scare Lee and Tabby. Yeah. So what ends up happening is that um, Shane and Shana are not on time, and they start their trick or treating without them, and that at a certain point these two beings meet up with the with them. But also they. Uh before tabby and lee score some points by getting their teenager friends to dress up as like werewolves and attack the kids that's right yeah yeah yeah. they like bit him (laughs) like imagine just like getting ready for your revenge and then you get bit by a teenager (laughs) yeah yeah they do pop out of the bushes and like bite drew and they're like haha got you yeah you now have whatever teen disease i have Herpes? You have co- COVID-96, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so 
uh, whatever. So at a certain point, there are these two people in costumes that appear that have pumpkins on their heads. Am I too? Is that too fast forwardy? Or that's basically where we are. That's about it. All I wrote in my notes is that there were some crazy costumes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like crazy costumes. Like Drew, who I know, like, she did we mention she's extremely short? And her dad calls her Elf because she has a pointy yeah. chin and ears, which goes into what you were saying about the self-esteem and yeah. kind of like body issues. Um, so she was a Klingon because, you know, That's right. 1996. I think there was like a little bit of a Star Trek revival sure. then. Uh, Shayna and Shane were giant snowmen. And mm-hmm. some random person spray painted their entire body silver to be the Statue of Liberty. But yeah, they were like, are right. they the Silver Surfer? And I'm like, yeah. this kid is like, why are they walking around the party? If they're walking around the party, soon they're going to be taking a real big nap. Because like, you yeah. can't spray paint your entire body. The fumes. <laughs> this kid. <laughs> and it's, I mean, it, it has to poison you in some way. Like of your course. skin's porous. And then um, I don't even, oh, they're like, they were ghosts, but they like, we need to cut eye holes. And I'm like, legit, that's how a co- uh, ghost costume works. And then we'll yeah. cut arm holes. And I'm like, the fuck? Mm-hmm. Like, that's not... <laughs> <laughs> you just look like a weird poncho that someone didn't cut the neck out of. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was weird, too, that Walker cut a hole, like, in the middle, <laughs> down... <laughs> <laughs> down about halfway in the sheet. <clears throat> I don't know what it was for. We never found out. It was for but, like some uh, sort of. Isn't there some religion where like that's where you lose you have sex with your wife through a sheet? Sure, sure. I, is that Hasidic? I think this is maybe problematic territory. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but if I was that religion, and maybe because it might it might be dope, I would uh, for, I would for my be. first time ever, I would go yeah, and, yeah, you know, slowly. When you finally get married, you will a have sex. That'll be cool. And B, you will uh, fart in front of your partner. <laughs> is, is I will at the same time. <laughs> Hopefully. It's my dream. It's my dream. You will fart so much that you'll no hands see. Right? <laughs> Hopefully for Just a no hands Yes, yeah. 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 And I slowly, <laughs> you'll say, oh, Lord. Oh. It's like sitting on a washing machine, right, whoa, ladies? Whoa, Nelly. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. There's a false scare before they go trick or treating. This is important. We missed it. Oh, that's Where right. They're like, "Hey, you can't go trick or treating," and she's mm-hmm. like, "Huh?" Oh, end of chapter. Why? Because a lot of adults are going missing in the neighborhood and yeah. have been for the past couple months, and the police don't have any leads, but they believe they're dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. F- like four people are dead. And uh, so they're nervous about going trick or treating, or the parents are nervous, but the yeah. dad ultimately relents and says, "You can go," which is insane. Yeah, that the town's sure. even like, "Yeah, I mean, all these people are dying, but just you know, be uh, yep, be safe, I guess." And ultimately, I mean, not to this doesn't really give anything away, but it is toward the end of the book. We find out they're out like past midnight. Oh yeah, like twelve. They're showing up at houses, and people are like, well, "What the fuck are you still doing?" <laughs> yeah, like, you, yeah. Do you know that they're like, like what people, if I was the murderer? People are being murdered. Like it's yeah. insane. Um, and it's crazy because they're like, "Well, look at all the people." Because also, like, if somebody was like, "Hey, people are getting murdered." Like now, you could bring up the article on your phone, on like NewJersey.com yeah. or something. But then they were like, "Yeah, like four people got murdered, and here's all of their photos that I I just have." Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, okay. And like, yeah. well, they're all overweight adults. And their fight is just like, listen, our kid is a kid and not an overweight kid. So it's like, number one, they're not overweight. So not going to get murdered. Number two, they're yeah. a child. Who would murder a child? No one's ever done that before. Yeah, because one thing about murderers that's, you know, they always follow the rules. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They have a certain criteria and they follow the creed. And then they write a note that says, hello, Mr. Policeman. Yeah. You, you could have saved them. I gave you all the clues. Um, yeah, so whatever. The, there's these two things that meet up with the four kids. So 
And if you're as confused as I was reading this, A, because I don't do a very good job explaining, but B, there's a lot of characters. The core group here is Drew Walker and then the frenemies Tabby and Lee. Mm -hmm. And these two things meet up with them. Presumably it's Shane and Shayna. Um, and it's like these costumes that have a pumpkin jack-o'-lantern for a head with a yeah. candle inside. So they, they're they made out to be um, elaborate, cool costumes, right? Like, like perhaps your head is underneath the fucking shoulders or whatever and the like jack-o'-lantern. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and but the, the voices are cool. Yeah, the voices are described well and sound yeah. cool. And also it shoots flames. Yeah, which is cool. I do think that this isn't even in my bad. It's, it's just something I'm thinking about is the description of flame. RL has like three words to describe the way that flames move. And that's what he sticks to for the rest of the book. And we're halfway through. So he, for like 60 pages, he's like, first of all, the, the flames, they licked. You know what else they did? They danced. And finally, they bobbed. <laughs> like that's that's really it. Meet my friend, Bob the Lick Dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to stage one, Bob hey, the Lick man. Dancer. Um, yeah, so the pumpkins are like, hey, we know. And they're like hissing and stuff. And everything they say is in italics. And uh, they say, we know a neighborhood that you'll get a lot of cool candy and it's the best neighborhood to trick or treat at. Follow us. And eventually they lead them through some creepy woods. And now the kids are a little hesitant. Yeah. Um, but they go through the woods and they do come out the other side to this little neighborhood that they haven't seen before. The houses are cute. They're close together. People seem to be in the spirit of Halloween. Um, so they're like, oh, this actually is cool. Of course, all the while thinking that these two characters are Shane and Shana. And their purpose is to scare Tabby and Lee. Um, but this is, the, you know, RL builds some doubt even in Walker and in uh, Drew because they're like, what are Shane and Shana doing? They're acting yeah. kind of like wild. They're like, I knew they were going to have some cool costumes, but these are kind of nuts. Like, yeah. yeah how like, are they why are we going still on woods? fire? Yeah, yeah. So um, they're going trick-or-treating in this neighborhood and things are cool, but it's getting late. Their bags of candy are overfilled and they've kind of had enough. They're like, you know, ready to, to move on to go home. And the, the crux of what's going to happen now is basically these jack-o'-lanterns want them to trick-or-treat forever, like to want them to keep going and going and going. And... Um, yeah, they do reveal like, hey, our goal is to get you to trick or treat forever. You can never leave this neighborhood. So like a weird, a weird like punishment question mark, like yeah. a weird like uh, scare. And it's weird, too, because like they go to houses and it's normal people that yeah. are just like uh, kids. It's the, we're, we live in murder town. What are you doing? It's yeah. like past midnight. And then I think don't they go to like one house and there's actually a pumpkin head person there? Yeah. Which is yeah, interesting. Yeah. At a certain point, like later in the night, there's like a pumpkin head person. And this is where um, it seems like everybody in the houses turns into a pumpkin head person. Because when the kids find the kids resist a few times and then finally they're like, we're not going to do it. And the pumpkin heads like screech. And that's like a siren. That's like the horn of Gondor that like yeah. brings everybody out of their homes. And they're oh, all pumpkin heads. Oh, I thought they were talking about the character from Saved by the Bell. When they screeched. <laughs> yeah, Dustin Diamond. Or I thought whatever. Dustin Diamond showed up and then all the pumpkins were just like, whoa, is that Dustin Diamond? And then they all yeah. hopped outside. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, I don't I got nothing for this. Oh, no. <laughs> and they basically, before that, they're like, our bags are full. And then they take their heads off and like scare the shit out of right. them. And they right. make them eat the candy aggressively to That's make right. more room so they can keep trick-or-treating yeah that happens before i guess they call everybody out of their houses um but that is that is kind of a fucked up scene amidst all this like this dumb thing that's happening that is kind of fucked up where they're like gorging themselves with chocolate and tabby has like chocolate in her hair and like dripping out of her mouth that's really gross but um yeah so 
now they're like surrounded by pumpkins. They take the their heads off of their shoulders and now they're like, they're on the ground and then they like lift them and hold them uh, in front of their crotches. And you don't know, like, are they going to do something with the pumpkins? You don't know. And uh, sexually. And um, they ultimately scare Lee and Tabby so much that they run away yeah they like try to slam dunk pumpkins onto their head like yeah. the like the pumpkin wrapper episode of power rangers that's yeah, yeah yeah that's right they do have like four they have four pumpkins that they're holding now that are presumably meant for the kids to turn them into living jack-o'-lanterns yeah and uh, they slam dunk as you said the pumpkins onto lee and tabby and they run away not knowing that they could just take the pumpkin heads off. Yeah. And it turns out that it is Shane and Shayna. And uh, Drew and uh, Walker, you know, this was the plan. They're all in the cahoots and uh, it worked out well. And we were misled because they were like, yeah, we were scared. Because the whole time we're in Drew's yeah. head and she's scared. She's like, these costumes are better than I thought they'd be. Which... Uh, do you want to just do you want to tell us why yeah sure uh they're aliens from outer space yeah shane and shana are they're aliens the whole time yeah and they're they're like like, friends and they know that they're aliens yeah right and uh they're like oh it really helps to have aliens as friends huh and not only that but everybody in the community is also an alien yeah so they went to like a a little like it's a very segregated city where all the aliens have to live in these low income close together houses (laughs) yeah i guess so um yeah and then the the twist at the end is like shane and shana are actually it's it's uh implied that they are the murderers yeah of um you know these four people who went missing and then they said, like, oh, don't eat us. And they're like, you're our friends, but also your kids. Wait until you're older and fatten up a bit. Yeah, right, right. And then we'll eat you. Yeah, so maybe you could tell from, like, how little fun we had in that plot description that uh, I don't give a shit about this book. I'm so unenthused. I liked it this. better than Lost Legend. Okay. <laughs> Okay, but I think the writing quality was ones. was worse. I, I just like I just think it was. I had so little good. I had one thing in my good, and I don't know. Um, All right, I, we'll I think you, good. you nailed it. Um, my, my good is on page forty nine. Uh, I just thought there was a line that was funny. Um, it says, "You, you're a bee." I stammered. He nodded. Tabby and I are still working on it. We bought black tights for my legs this morning. Cool, I said. He looked really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was that was funny. That's uh, um, Lee is a bee for present day Halloween, um, and just that he's like, "Yeah, I'm a bee." We bought black tights, and then you just say, "Cool." <laughs> But you, then you say he looks really stupid. It's pretty funny. That's all I had for my good. That's it. Yeah, I liked uh, the the rest is unremarkable to me. Yeah, I liked. Um, I feel like he set the scene really well. A lot of times, mm-hmm. a very autumn book. Like uh, Walker yeah. and I were ten. We were just hanging out in my in front of my house. Walker had his bike on the side and was doing something to the spokes on one wheel. It was a beautiful autumn day. Down the block, someone was burning a big pile of leaves. It's against the law here in Riverdale. My dad always threatens to call the police when someone burns leaves, but I love the smell. Yeah. I like that. Uh, I like when the kids are trying to one-up each other. Like, he's like, what kind of bike is that? Is that a 12-speed? Lee says to Walker, and he's like, yeah. He's like, my bike's a 42-speed. And he's like, that doesn't exist. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad works for bikes, and he gave me an (laughs) 87-speed. Yeah. I really like the description of the hollows, the neighborhood, which, oh yeah, we forgot to say there was one point where she talks about their like plan and they get kidnapped by old people, but it was a dream. Yeah. Uh, which, whatever, unimportant. Um, on page 70, the pumpkin voices is, it's really good. Like, uh, let's go somewhere else, the jack-o'-lantern said from somewhere inside the pumpkin head. His voice came out in a hoarse crackle, too harsh to be a whisper, a dry, choked sound. Somewhere else, his partner echoed, 
Her voice also came out in a hoarse crackle, like dry, dead leaves being crinkled together. Yeah. Like that. Uh, On page 86, our screams rose shrilly, cutting through the night air like wailing sirens. A lot of very poetic for Stein. Yeah. And then uh, on page 101, I just really liked this sentence. It reminded me of like one of the most iconic scenes from Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, when they're trying to get back to watch TV and explode. Uh, the four of us trooped across the street, dragging the bags beside us. The night air had grown cold and heavy. A strong breeze rattled the trees and sent brown leaves scuttling past our feet. Mm. That's a that's a very Halloween yeah. fall thing. I like that. So, uh, Did you have a lot of bad? Yeah, I mean, I guess no more bad than other books. Um, but I don't like that she growls, that Drew growls. Like, that's part of a her lot. character. A lot. Yeah. Um, and it, it just stuck out to me on page three, because at the top of page three, it says Gur, and there are nine, eight or nine R's in Gur, and that's the sentence. So I just fucking hated that. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, a page four problematic description of a, a, a black person. And I, I think we could say black now, too. It, it's almost work, worse when it's like, my friend who's African-American. It's like Trump's like, my African-American friend over there. It's yeah. like, ugh, yucky. Um, it says, Lee is tall and good looking with dark brown eyes and a great warm smile. Lee is African-American and he sort of struts when he walks and acts real cool like the rappers on MTV videos. I mean, it stopped me in my tracks. There's, just, there's a reason Scholastic pulled it. <laughs> yeah, just so fucked. Um, so I did not enjoy that. Yeah, uh, He's always... Uh, another thing about lee is he's always chewing gum and on page six he has like bubble gum juice dripping from his mouth it's like fucked up that was disgusting uh on page 30 i don't know why i wrote this down but it says oh yeah because it's this is also its own sentence it says the the harsh buzz nearly made me jump out of my skin was i a little tense yes in all caps (laughs) with an exclamation point it sounds like it's like a coffee talk or like you're like talking on the phone and be like, and guess what happens next? Too much? You better believe it. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's like that mixed with a Borat knot. Yeah. Um, oh, the the flarp I was mentioning earlier, just the, the kind of goo, the slime that they have to, to pull a prank on uh, Lee and Tabby in the one year flashback. It burns a hole through a couch. Oh yeah, on I forgot page about that. Thirty-two. Like, what the fuck is that? Why is it acidic? <laughs> or maybe it's just a shitty couch. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Yeah, the couch was um, made out of like the same thing they make edible underwear out of. <laughs> so yeah, it's like yeah. a whole fruit roll-up couch. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's just sugar. Um, page thirty-two. I don't know why this kind of got me, but it says, um, or I'm sorry, not page thirty-two. That was the couch. Um, on page 34, it says, the grass shone gray. This is a pale half moon floated low over the houses. The grass shone gray under a light blanket of frost. I, I'm i sure shone is a word. I'm sure he's right in some way, but I, I don't know. It sounds weird as hell. Like, like why not use shined? The grass shined gray. I, I don't know. The grass shone gray. Maybe I'm just like getting to a point where the word has just become a sound to me. It's weird. Um, anyway. Uh, oh, yeah. I thought the thing with the old people who trap them in the house is like the coolest part of the book almost because it's like the dream is like they go to a house to trick or treat and this old lady's like, oh, I love your costumes. Come in. Let my husband see your costumes. And they're like, all right, I guess. And they come in and then they go into a back room where there are a bunch of like crying kids and uh, the lady like closes the door and says like, you can never leave. We're going to kill you here. And I thought that was like, I don't know. I thought it was executed well, Uh, but it was just a daydream. And I like how that ended too, where like they were like, ooh, a back door and they sneak out and they look in the window and they're like, bye Lee and Tabby. Have fun being child abducted. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It was good. Um, 
And then, yeah, also bad, page 45 I wrote, as I said earlier, making it so that Shane and Shayna are scared uh, about the murders because they're, you know, they're a little bit more heavy set and mm. like the the murderer has an MO, a particular demographic. It's just that whole idea is just fucked. Which is weird about- that because they're the murderers. Yes, right. They're the murderers also... Oh yeah, the one thing I said before is the French cover has a creepy pumpkin-headed guy and UFOs flying around behind them. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Well, yeah, this cover is cool, but there's um, too many pumpkin heads. Like, there's not this many in the book, and there's a little bulldog on the cover, which is great. I was like, like revisiting this it. cover, I was like, oh, best dressed bulldog. But there's no bulldog in this book. No. Well, also, I think because this uh, book and episode were probably teased together this art may have had to be in extra early yeah i'm sure it was because he's still one you know one book a month at this point yeah so uh how about your back great cover great cover um same things you said all the the weight shaming the really awkward racial stuff uh i hated this we didn't want a to pull a mean joke like having people break into the house that was too mean and too frightening just weird also i just think the plot like the they act like it was this huge crime and it wasn't nothing really scaled in this book yeah like these kids go crazy for revenge for like no reason yeah they are the problem like they are the shitty kids and there really wasn't any lesson to that no nothing was learned no they were just assholes and i hated them and they sucked and fucked them but uh yeah there's that also there's a point on page 80 when they want to stop trick-or-treating and like tabby was like but we want to quit and the aliens are like but you cannot quit (laughs) yeah right the threats get real tepid yeah um also, at one point, he's like, he dropped packages of Chuckles into your bag. And I was like, the fuck? And I'm like, oh, Chuckles, a candy founded in 1921. <laughs> and I'm like, I think right. I've seen Chuckles before. But like, Arl Stein was just like, what candy do kids like? Ah, that's right. Sh- uh, boot laces and Chuckles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some some kids got chiclets. Other yeah. got like that uh, Violet's gum or whatever it is. Yeah, they got a handful of Metamucil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What's more important than staying regular, kids? All right, and now we're at that end point. Yes. So, uh, spook. top spook and scare. What's yours? I mean, I don't have one. I I think maybe the scariest part was the daydream with the old people. I was like, because when I got to that point, I was like, now we're getting somewhere. Like we endured two stupid flashbacks, and I'm like, okay, now some shit's going on. And it's sort of uh, out of left field because there's no pumpkins involved, but then it's nothing. So, but I don't know, maybe that. How about you? Mine's less of like, mine's like a more realistic fear. Kind of thinking about being out on a Halloween by yourself with people and doing what you're not supposed to. Yeah. Uh, Especially when they had no idea that the four murderers were their alien friends. Yeah. So like, not only like your thirst for revenge outweighs your own safety of getting murdered and when they're going through the woods and stuff they're like oh shit like being i don't know think about like just when it's unsafe to be out in certain places like if you've ever been somewhere like thinking about that as a kid when people in my neighborhood are dead like you know that's some movie stuff that's kind of scary right it's it's anxiety inducing for us having like watching it from the outside but i guess when you're a kid you're not really thinking when you're about a kid it. yeah you th- i think that would scare me more as a kid like now it's like whatever like yeah. <laughs> a body washed up near my job and they were like you know what and i'm like yeah it's this the city it's the fucking happen yeah who knows That's where it came <laughs> right. from yeah yeah who the fuck knows like whatever people die all the time this world's awful but yeah. as a kid it's just like you feel like from all the tv like you're gonna have to solve the mystery and shit and like <laughs> like yeah, you yeah. daydream you're you it gets crazy so that was my scare Roundabout cool. waves in it. I like it. Uh, best dressed? Uh, yeah. So there is, in the special neighborhood, there is, uh, on page 63, there's a big orange cat uh, with beautiful blue eyes. It's described oh, very so nicely. Pretty. And I, I love him. 
He's a little cutie pie. I want to rub my face in his little belly. I love that. Yeah. Uh, my my co- mine is Walker. Texas Ranger. Walker, Texas Ranger. Mm-hmm. Uh, he dresses up in all black so that he can scare Tabby and they could be oh, more. Right. I think. But uh, when Drew's parents say, what are you? Because he's, he's just dressed, he's like a black face mask on and black clothes yeah. and gloves and boots. And and then he goes, I'm a dark and stormy night. And then yeah. they're like, where's the storm? And he pulls out a tiny squirt gun and just sprays Drew in the face. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was That's one of those clever costumes. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, the dad loved it too. He was cracking up. Dads love that shit, dude. Yeah. I mean, if Eric was on this, our dad, previous yeah. uh, Adventures in Collecting, AIC pod. Uh, AIC underscore pod Eric just reach out to him about how much of a daddy is with his with dad his dick beautiful <laughs> mustache and his dad dick his dad dick has a matching mustache I bet yeah Oof. love gotta love that dick mustache yeah we'll only know when we all take baths together because <laughs> he's our dad and <laughs> yeah I can't can... wait till he shows us how to shower it's great um did you when you were growing up did you uh when you were weaned onto the, when you went from baths to shower, were you? Did you shower with your dad? No. Oh. Oh uh, yeah, no. me neither. <laughs> but I did. I do remember, like, when we were down the shore and stuff. We only there was no bath, so I'd have to shower with like my parents because I, I don't know why. Like, as I yeah, like, do, what do they think I'm gonna do? Like, stare up too long and drown or <laughs> something? Drown. <laughs> like, why is the idea yeah, of the shower so is. scary to a kid? Parents reach out to us. <laughs> right. It's actually yeah. It would be less precarious to be yeah, in a like, shower if you drown in a shower you're like i think that you're supposed to i think you're so, done you're, like, you're not supposed to be alive there. yeah 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 but yeah, a bathtub i mean anyone can you know take a spill or yeah sink in there to, have pull a little alert. uh yeah a little what lies beneath huh remember mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. uh alternate title uh what lies beneath <laughs> <laughs> How about you? Um, uh, I don't. I don't know. How about uh, six days, seven nights? <laughs> How about this? I'll just do what my notes uh, auto corrected to because I write my notes on in notes on my iPhone. Mm-hmm. Jack's lantern. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's like a, a sister project to Jack's mannequin. I literally wrote it out like Jack dash O dash lantern. And <laughs> iPhone was just like, ah, ah, you mean Jack's lantern. <laughs> and I was like, you motherfucker. Right. So yeah. frustrating to, I, it does that to me a lot. And I'm going back and like changing it to what I want, thinking it will learn, but it never lets me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. I mean, problematic ma- haunted mask. I don't know. Yeah, I mean that's accurate. Uh, I would say the witch is the aliens. I guess, right? Where's the witch? Yeah, I guess so. That makes sense. And I or the- or the witch would be the lady who's hiding the kids, but she's imaginary. But she's basically an imaginary yeah. witch. Yeah, she's a daydream witch. Either or. And um, liquor. I just had the pumpkin heads because their flames are licking like hell. Yeah, the flames. Yeah. Or maybe the puppy on the front of the cover does little licks. Ooh la la. Little puppy licks. Come here, you little good boy. I'm going to rub your little belly. Cut off your balls. Hey, spay and neuter your pets. That's right. That's what we have to say. Is his head that? Oh, man. I just upset myself. Could he lick his balls? No, could he? Yeah. Well, can can this dog lick his own balls or will he light his balls on fire? Oh, with the head (laughs) on. Yeah, I don't know. But what upset me is I just thought I was like, because all the, the jack-o'-lantern people take their heads off and walk around without heads. And we right. know what a person without a head looks like. Tim Burton did a whole documentary on it with his yes. friend, uh, uh, Mr. Walkins. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. Yeah, but a dog without its head on? That's just something I can't. Like, imagine a dog running around without a head. That's scary. That's upsetting. It's fucked up. I, I am intrigued of the ability to take my own head off. Isn't that what Marilyn Manson did? So he could, <laughs> <laughs> I would also use it to like, I would take it off my head and I'd put it behind me. At, 
<laughs> I was literally going to say, if I was Shane or Shanna, I would do like a truth or dare, and I'd be like, take off your head and fart on it. <laughs> I would just use it to smell my ass, make sure everything's, <laughs> everything's clean down there. Just, just a little. All right, we're good. Imagine it's like a it's like a, ho- a Halloween doctor visit, and it'd just be like, you have an anal fissure, and you're like, wait a second, I don't think so, and you pop your head off and like, <laughs> yeah. show me. Let me see. Let me see that. Yeah, that was a, that would have helped me. That was a concern when I first had to apply the cream. I was like, do I do I put it like on the fissure or just like shove it in there? Turns out you could just like finger it up there and it'll find its way where it needs to be. Oh, nice. Yeah, just a tip nice, for nice. all my fissure heads out there. <laughs> uh, this has been the Calling All Creeps podcast. We're oh, wow. going to be done in half a year. <laughs> yeah, but it's an exciting one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come for four- this journey. Thank you for yeah. riding out 2020 with us. We got one more. Next one's going to be a special hol- holiday episode. In that yeah. we are not doing anything special because no, but it will be closer to the holidays. Yeah, and also, uh, it's named after my farts. The next book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's right. I call my farts vampire breath. <laughs> you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I will from now on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh, baby. Because it I smells like if... something died. <laughs> <laughs> and and that... blood comes out. <laughs> it's like a <laughs> vampire cough. Hey, if you got blood coming out of your butt, hit me up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll know what to do. Um, yeah, that would have been a good tie-in to have like some kind of cologne or perfume, vampire breath. Just a good marketing thing for Goosebumps. Of course, it's for us. children's series, but let's yeah, make our own, let's make our own cologne. There we, there we go. We could do that. Yep. Ha- I don't know how that works. We got to go. Let's just go to those places we talked about in the beginning. Those like yoga studios that just sell smells. And we'll right. Just mix like a bunch into like a old Axe body spray can. <laughs> I'm like, I was just gonna say we could like fill up a little bottle with vodka and then just spray aerosol febreze into it and then package that shit up send it out you smell like an alcoholic that took a shit (laughs) (laughs) and tried to cover it up that's right baby yeah yeah a perfect gift for your loved ones this holiday season yeah we'll call it febreze (laughs) yeah that's febreze and booze yeah, that's very clever. I love For it. For dudes. For bruise dudes, I'll see you next time. Well, if we won't see you. Remember, but... if, you're, if you got blood in your ass, <laughs> just, you know, that that can't happen, shouldn't happen, not on my watch. Uh, you got to hit me up, send me a, a few pics, make sure it's good to go. Hey, uh, take your head off the top of your head and just uh, put it behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Take a little sniff. Make sure everything's good. Send it to me. Will I cut this out? No. And uh, don't forget the wise saying: if your uh, if your your ass is shitting through hell, just keep shitting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, uh, bye everyone. Bye everyone.